It's exciting to present at the Carlton County Memorial Library our special guest. Come on everybody, friends one and all, let's come together, let's break down those walls. We're gonna listen and we're gonna learn, having fun all the way. Somebody said, let's listen and learn together. Let's sing and learn forever. Let's listen, sing, and learn. Hello boys and girls. We are continuing part two with Dr. Margaret Reed McDonald. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so let's dive right in. Mm -hmm. Who is your target audience when writing your children's books? My target audience is uh, young children and teachers mm -hmm. and librarians who I hope will use the stories and parents who hope will use the stories with kids. And my, my books, I, when, I, when I'm writing them, I want to make sure they're written so well that any random father can pick them up and read them. They're going to sound just like I read them or you read them as awesome. a librarian. They have to be designed so that works. So I have, a son -in -law, I have two son-in-laws. One's a school librarian, so he knows how to read it. He doesn't count. I have a son-in-law who works for Microsoft who has no idea how to read a picture book. So I make him read them aloud and I listen. Mm -hmm. And if they if he stumbles or they sound clunky in his mouth, I rewrite that part. <laughs> so that's a good way to, to test your writing. Even if your kids are if your kids are writing stories, mm -hmm. write one and have somebody read it back to you and listen. It's a good way to tell if it's good or not. Oh, okay. Here's one I wanted to show. Can you see <laughs> that boy from the Dragon Palace? Yes. He's great. He's great. And uh, the illustrators were done by um, a Japanese illustrator. Yeah, she lives in San Francisco, but she's from Japan. And I like the way she made the illustrations. Let me show you a little bit and I'll show you exactly how, why I chose this book. It's about a flower seller. Let's see. A poor flower seller found no one to buy his flowers. He said, I'm gonna give them to the dragon king who lives beneath the sea. And he threw the flowers out of the waves. And the water began to swirl and swirl and swirl. And suddenly, up from the sea came a beautiful lady. Oh, yeah. She had a little boy in her arms. He had the snottiest nose you ever did see. Uh-oh. <laughs> she said, this is a gift for you from the Dragon King. And she put the little boy in the old man's arms. The old man said, what will I do with this snot nosed little child? Oh, said the lady, you must take him home. Feed him shrimp every day, oh. vinegar and put in sugar. He likes it like that. He'll bring you good luck. And she disappeared beneath the waves. But the old man took the boy home and he made him shrimp and vinegar and sugar. And then he fed the little boy. And here's where the participation part comes in. Because you have to take your bowl of shrimp <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and you've got to slurp. <sighs> exactly. And then the little boy snuffled on his right sleeve, snuffle. And he snuffled on his left sleeve. And he blew his nose. Huh, huh, huh. Ah, chew. Uh oh. And when he blew his nose, uh -huh. the floor was covered in gold coins. Some matching trousers with the old man! <laughs> and the next day he ran to town and he bought more shrimp and vinegar and sugar and he, then you repeat it again. So to the story, the kids get to keep going and slurping and ha. Huh? And then, of course, he wishes for a, a palace and he gets a palace. Wow. And he wishes. Yeah, and then he just keeps making wishes. The old man. The old man. Every time the little boy blows his nose, he gets, the old man gets his wish. I love that book. Do I have that book? <laughs> We're gonna get I that book. You, you said you had it. Well, then I'll go back and read it. <laughs> go ahead and read it and read it to your kids and put it out so they can check it out and take it home. Yeah. I don't forget how it ends, but you can guess what happens. Um. Okay, I, I like trying to figure it out. So I haven't read the book, boys and girls, so this is a true guess. Hey, Margaret, I think what's gonna happen is the man gets greedy. Aha! Uh -huh. 
Is Good it guess. true? Good guess. Okay, he gets greedy and he messes things up and he loses the child and his wishes. Is that is that accurate? You're absolutely right. You don't know how it happens, but he ends up right back in his house. Oh, wow. But you got to read the whole story to see everything that happens in between. Now, that is amazing. And you know where that comes from guessing like this? Being a reader and a storyteller and a writer. And hearing other stories that yes, are like, and that's how it stories happens. have a pattern. And my stories are all folk tales. Uh, there's only one that I actually made up. The others are all stories that are from around the world that have been told. And so I didn't really create them. I just retold them. I'm still the author because I use my own words. Mm -hmm. But there's stories that were told by grandmas and grandpas, like the pick and peas one, yeah. all around the world and passed from person to person. Every time they're told, they change a little bit because every teller tells them in their own words and makes them their own. Well, I love it. All right, just a few more questions. So how many books have you written? Written, uh, you can see piles of papers behind me that are books I've written that haven't gotten published yet. Really? Not, oh yeah, I've got probably uh, 60 over there I haven't got published. Because you send them out and they reject them. You send them out and they reject them. I've gotten oh. over, I think 500 rejections so far. Yeah. Yeah. I can't take it. I can't take the rejection. That's what the, <laughs> if you did, oh, then you don't want to be an author. But because that's what it takes. But I have got 66 actually published. Uh -huh. And I've got two more coming out if COVID ever finishes. Oh, God. Kind of stopped in the tracks. And some have been published in another language. So here's Fat mm -hmm. Cat in oh. Korean. See the, see the Korean letters? It's in yeah. Korean. So it's kind of fun to have them get published in a different language. What stands out in your head? I have two up there coming out right now. One is called a collection. It's called Kindness Tales. Oh. And a book called Peace Tales and one called Earth Care that are folk tales on pathways to peace and war and pathways to take care of the earth. Right. This, this is a kindness. This is a companion book. Stories about kindness. Coming out from all so this of in the spring very soon wow. but the one i'm working on right now that's it's a picture book and it's coming out i don't know when this is one that's kind of in between publishers mm -hmm. back. so it's called feisty and here it is this is the dummy for it Ooh. so i write it and then i i paste the words in down here mm -hmm. and then the editor says make changes and i make changes and i wrote this with my son and daughter my son daughter and son-in-law who are actually librarians and storytellers too oh wow and so we had to work together and every time we read it we change some words and then i read it aloud to audiences of children and i change some words to make it sound better exactly i tell people that all the time a writer you will cut if you read it tonight you will change some words <laughs> change the word it's called editing and you do that over and over again yeah. so it down at the bottom all these They've been, they've been pasted over and over again. It is paste on new ones, paste on new ones, paste on new ones. So who is your illustrator? Those are gorgeous. Aren't they? Diane Greenside. And she illustrated a book I did called uh, Teeny Winnie Bop. It's out of print, but maybe you already have it in your library. Mm -hmm. She illustrated a lot of books and she did really funny illustrations. So. so they draw it without coloring it. And then when it's final, they will color it. First of all, they draw that color and she, you see she left space for the words to go in here. Wow. It's all ready to go. But I want to show you the dummy the way it starts out. I love that. So what kind of, it, it looks like 11 by 17 paper. Yeah, it's just um, typing paper, but when it, when it's, because the book's gonna be that size, but when right. it, and then I paste it together, you know, and make it into a book. So this is like, kind of like that. But that's about 11 by 17. And you just fold it in half. Yeah. Is that yeah, because it's going to be an eight and a half by eleven, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's smart. And and every picture book has exactly thirty-two pages. That's good. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I love it. I love it that we have so much in common, Miss Margaret. I it's love fun. it. And I looked online and I saw some of the books that you wrote with your with your, your with your kids in the library. Yes. They well, actually, I wrote them and they illustrated them. Ah, you it's, wrote them and they illustrated them. Right. It's called Illustrate a Book, and that's it's our local legacy, actually. That's really kind of fun. It was a lot of fun. So I totally understand when you 
said you got your PhD and you got a chance to research and do all these. And I understand because folk tales, believe it or not, when I became a children's librarian, folk tale is, was, and still is my favorite genre. So. <laughs> And, the, and they're good because they've been passed down for thousands of thousand years and polished, polished, polished by lots of tellers until they got really good. That's why I love folk tales. Yes. And you know what I love about it too? We can cater it to our today's society now. So yes. that's why it will never get old. Because uh, you're, you'll cater it to your generation and I'll cater it to my generation and everybody exactly. can relate. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so one last question, and we appreciate your time. Yeah. What is your favorite book that you have written? My favorite probably is Fat Cat. I think you said you didn't have a copy, but you were going to order one. I already ordered it. <laughs> and it goes, meow, meow, fat, because I am a hungry, hungry cat. Oh, I'm meow, meow, fat, because I am a hungry, hungry cat. And the cat eats everybody it meets. And you can imagine how that's going to end. Oh, no. Let me see. Let me try to guess. Well, He's probably going to explode. That's eating the elephant. Oh, no. He might explode like the lady who ate the fly. You know, he could. That's <laughs> one way. That's if he doesn't. But your kids could write their own story with that ending. With that ending. I how, love how, it. How else could it end? Someone could eat him. <gasps> that would be another <laughs> fun ending. That's not the way it is, but that would be a fun ending. Okay, so you got me on that one. You know what happens? No. The mouse, he swallows the mouse last of all. Uh-huh. And the mouse had a pair of scissors. Oh, and cut them in. <laughs> and they all got out. Oh my goodness, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, because it's a folk tale and I can fix it myself, I changed uh -huh. the ending and had the mouse sewing back up again. Oh, good. Kids will be happy point? about that. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they were best friends after all. <laughs> wow. He was trying to tell him, don't do it, friend. Don't do yeah. it. But he kept Because <laughs> <laughs> he was a hungry, hungry cat. <laughs> exactly. He had a big cat. Awesome. I had so much fun. I know my boys and girls and adults and everyone who watched this video will enjoy it and fall in love with you all over again because I really enjoyed this. <laughs> Me too. It was fun talking to you this morning. Thank you, Dr. Margaret. It's been a pleasure. I hope we can do this again, seriously. Okay. Take care of yourself, honey. Bye-bye. Bye now. Thanks for spending this great time. Now, children, it's time to go. Thanks for watching Miss Sheila's reading show. Hope you listened and you learned and remember all the things you heard. We hope, children, next week that you will return. If you enjoyed watching us, please like and subscribe. Bye bye. What folk am I?